Welcome Year 8 students to the next part of our Algebra unit. As you can see, we're looking at like terms in this video. So we are going to, hopefully by the end of this video, be able to identify like terms. So have a look at a couple of terms or, um, or more terms even and be able to decide whether they are what we call like terms. Um, we're going to be able to simplify expressions. So once we identify which terms are like, we're going to be adding and subtracting those terms. And that's what we do when we collect. And we're also going to be able to, uh, be able to solve equations that require us to first collect like terms. So what I mean by that is we're going to see, we're going to have, um, we're going to have equations where you can have multiple x terms. So you might have something that looks like this 2x plus uh, 3x uh, take away x equals 7 or something of the like. So see how we've got multiple terms here that have an x in them, have an x pronumeral. We're going to be able to solve those sorts of equations because we're going to know that we'll be able to collect those like terms together. So some of the criteria for success from this particular part of the unit is that we'll be able to state whether two terms are like. And we want to use mathematical language when we do that. So we're going to be using uh, the word pronumeral a lot. Um, we want to also simplify expressions. So there's an example there, something that can be simplified. We need to be able to identify that it can be simplified and then be able to do that. So I'll show you some examples. And then when I mean um, we're going to solve equations, uh, as you can see, again, we've got an equation here that's got uh, an x term over there, and it's also got an x term here. So we will need to collect like terms together before we can solve, and I'm going to show you how we can do that as well. Okay, so let's get into what like terms are. What you want to do when you are looking at two terms is you want to be able to decide, um, am I looking at the same the same term. In other words, are they alike? Like terms will have the same pronumerals. So you might have, um, you might be looking at just some terms that have one pronumeral in them. So something like um, 3x um, and negative 7x. Notice how they've got the same pronumeral. They both have an x here and here. We um, also will have the same combinations of pronumerals though, so it's not just about sharing one in common, they have to, they have, to have exactly the same pronumerals. So same, uh, I'll call this same combination of pronumerals. So for example, um, if you've got something that's actually uh, x, y, so you can see that sometimes, Say you had, I'll just change colours, um, 3xy um, and 2y. Uh, uh, these here are not like terms. So these ones, um, I'm going to change it in a second, but these two at the moment are not like terms because this one's got xy and this one only has y. So that means I can't actually collect them together because the value of x, y may not be the same as the value of y. It's likely that it isn't the same in most cases. So for this to be correct, it needs to have the same combination, so it also needs to have x, y. It also needs to have the same powers because some terms will have powers included. So for example, you could have um, something like negative 5x squared, um, say y, z. If I want something to be like to that, so I can't have something like 3xy, they're not alike. Well, for starters, this one doesn't have a z in it, but also this one's got x and that one's got x squared, which makes it different. So the powers are also important. For this to be like with that term, I need to have x squared, I need to have y, and I also need to have z as this one does. Now they are like terms. Notice that in each of these cases, I don't care what the, what the coefficient is. This bit here doesn't matter. So the coefficient, it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be one or whatever number it is. I just made that up as I went because it's not the coefficient that matters here. It is the pronumeral 
and the powers on those pronumerals. So there we have um, just some, some examples of what are like. Now what we're going to do is try and identify some like terms. If I have a look over here, I've got which pairs are like terms. So we're just going to say like or unlike. First of all, I've got um, this one here, 3x and 5x. What you might like to do actually is if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see that there are, well, we can almost see that one, but you can pause uh, just wherever you need to so that you can see them and jot them down. You might like to have a try of them before I do them. Once you're ready, we'll have a look. 3x and 5x, I've got the same pronumeral, same power, it's a power of one. Um, so yes, these are like terms. This one down here, this second one, notice this is a squared and this one is a, only a. So that's got a power of one. Notice how the powers are different. That means these are not like terms. I'm going to write unlike. So different powers if I needed to give a reason. Okay, this one here. Now this is an interesting one because we've got xy as this uh, first, first term and 2yx. Now what I want to think about is I've got, I definitely have the same letters. I've got x and y. This one's just written the other way around, y and x. The powers are the same because we've got a 1, a 1, a 1 and a 1. And of course we just don't write the 1 there normally. So I need to ask myself, would x times y be the same as y times x? Does that matter that they're written the other way around? You're correct if you said no, it doesn't matter because these are being multiplied and you can change the order of multiplication and you're still going to get the same result. So this one is actually the same as writing 2xy. And when I write it like that, you can see that it is the same as this term over here because that's also xy. So these are like. These ones here, I'm just going to check. I've got x squared and on this one, x squared. I've got y and I've got y. So these are exactly the same term. x squared y is the term and these numbers here are about coefficient. The coefficient doesn't matter, remember. So these are like as well. Finally, just this one at the bottom. On my m, I've got power of 1 and on this one it's a power of 2. On this term I've got m squared so that's a power of 2 whereas on this one I've got a power of 1. So I'm comparing the m's and I'm comparing the n's and we can see they've got different powers so they are unlike. Some more obvious examples might be something like 2x and 2y they are clearly different. So if you wanted something just a little bit more straightforward of unlike terms, there's another one there for you. What we want to be able to do, of course, is be able to simplify. So once we do identify whether they are like or not, let's have a look at what we do. You'll often be asked to simplify by collecting like terms. And that's why I've written this word here, because it's something that's going to come up a lot. When we're, when we're asking you to simplify, we are not solving. We can't solve at this point, if you have a look at example one, because I don't have an equation. We solve equations, we simplify expressions. This first one here, I thought I'd start off nice and easy, because as you can see, we've got 4x, 3x, and we're taking away 2x. So all of these terms here are like terms. So here I've got... Um, 4, 3, and then I'm taking away 2. Because they're all like terms, um, all I'm going to do now is look at the coefficients on those like terms. It's basically saying you've got 4 lots of x, or 4 groups of x, plus another 3 groups of x. So I've got 7 groups of x when I add these two together. Then I'm going to take away 2 groups of x after that. 7 groups take away 2 groups will leave me with 5 groups of x. So my answer will be 5x. So notice I've put equals because what I'm saying is this is equal to this line and this is equal to the one above. So this is not an equation. Um, some of you are getting confused between these because you see this equals and suddenly think it's an equation. I don't know what this is equal to. So it's still an expression. When you're simplifying though, you can pop the equals at the front. That's conventional, that's normal. Over to another example now, and I've got 
Um, I've got some M's and I've got some N's. So I'm going to start off with the M's. I've got 11 groups of M and I'm taking away two groups of M. So that will leave me with nine groups of M. After that, I'll deal with the N's. So I'm just writing them out again for now. I've got eight groups of N here. Notice it's positive, so I've got eight of them and I'm taking away six of them. So I'm left with two of them, two groups of N. So it will simplify to 9n plus 2n. Now, just keep in mind that I could have done that in one step. I didn't have to break it into two. If you're confident doing that, by all means, you can. Now, I can't quite scroll all the way over because I've reached the end of my, my screen. So if you have a look here, I'm, again, I've got m's and, and n's. However, if you have a look here, the m's aren't grouped together like they were in the last example. So we don't assume that they're always, the like terms are always going to be side by side in an expression. We might have to identify them in a big group of terms. So if I start off with the M's, have a look, I've got six M's here, positive. So I've got six groups of M, but notice with this one, it's got take away. That means I've got to take away these three groups of M that are just here. So what I'm going to do is 6m take away 3m. That leaves me with three groups of m. Then I'm writing out what's left. And what's left is this 2n and take away n, which will come afterwards. Now these are the only like terms that are remaining. So now what I'm going to do is have a look at what I've got. I've got positive, so two groups of n, and I'm taking away one group of n. That leaves me with one group of n, so plus n. Just last one in terms of um, collecting, just something that looks a little bit different now because as you can see, I've got x squared as a term. So 2x squared, taking away 3x and then I'm adding 4x. One of the reasons I wanted to look at this um, was A, if you have a look here, that one is not like, it's not the same as these two terms. These two terms are just x. This one's got x squared. So I can't simplify that bit. I'm going to write it out again. It doesn't have a, a pair, doesn't have another term that's like it. Now this next bit is tricky because if I look at what I've got left, I have take away 3x and then add 4x. I'm going to read this as negative 3x. You're starting off with 3 less, but then you're adding 4 to it. So in other words, I'm doing negative 3 plus 4 in my head. That will give me positive 1. And since it's x terms that I'm looking at, it's positive 1x. But we don't write 1x, we write just x, like so. So when you are looking at these terms, it's really important that you do look at the term like I did here with the sign in front of it because sometimes a term will be negative or it will be, it looks like it's being taken away, which is accurate as well. Um, so you actually have to consider it being a negative number and then you might take away from that or you might add to it like I did just now. To finish off, I wanted to show you how we can combine expanding and collecting of like terms. So we've done expanding in previous lessons. Here what we can do is not just expand, but, also, but then after expanding, look for any like terms we might have, and then we simplify by collecting them together. I'm going to do that with three examples here. This first one, I'm going to go 2 times x, and then I'm going to do 2 times negative 6. So 2x and then 2 lots of negative 6 gives me negative 12. This last bit, that's not part of the bracket, so that wasn't multiplied by 2. So I'm just going to write that now underneath. Finally, identify any like terms you might have. If I look through here, I've got two terms here that share an x. So they are like terms. Let's add them together. I've got two lots of x here and I've got five lots of x being added there. So I have two plus five is seven, seven lots of x. 
And that 12 there, that's not like. It doesn't have an X on it, so it can't be added to the other terms. One that's a little bit trickier now, uh, because of course we do want to push ourselves. First of all, I notice I've got 5 plus X take away, and then I've got 2 times this bracket. That stands out to me because it's multiplication. And multiplication, if you think about our bid mass, has to happen before addition and subtraction. So since it's happening, since it's happening before addition and subtraction, I need to expand first. So I'll do 5 plus x, take away, and then I've got to do this bit here. I might leave the take away for now just so I can show you how I expand this one. When I expand, I look at what uh, coefficient or what number I have that's being multiplied by the numbers inside the bracket. So if you have a look here, I've got negative 2 because it's got a minus. That's going to be multiplied by this term and then it's going to be multiplied by the negative 4. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do negative 2 times by 3x. So that's going to give me negative 6x. So it's 2, 3 is a 6 and it was a negative here. The next thing I'm going to do is negative 2 times negative 4. 2, 4 is a 8 and since it's a negative by a negative, that's going to give me positive 8. So the reason this one is more challenging is because of that negative out the front. So please be really careful when you see that negative, consider what I've just done. I've multiplied that entire number, negative 2, by the numbers inside the bracket. Now we're going to collect these like terms. So have a look at what you've got. I'll start with my x's. So if you have a look, actually I might not start with my x's since my numbers are, I've got a number here 5 at the start, I might start with that. So I've got 5 and then any other numbers that are on their own, they are like terms, so 5 and 8. Adding that together, since it's got plus and this is plus, that will give me 8 and 5, uh, let's, let's take that off, sorry, 8 and 5 which is 13. I've got plus x and then take away 6, so plus 1x. 1 take away 6 is negative 5, so negative 5x. That's now finished because these two no longer are like, so that, uh, well, they never were, but these two aren't like terms, so I can't add them together. Very last one, we are going to solve this time. We're going to solve by first expanding, and we've got two expansions taking place and then we're going to collect those like terms together. So let's go. Two lots of 3x, that will give us 6x. Two times negative two, that will give us negative four. Now I'll expand this next bit. Negative four by x, that will give me negative four x. And then negative four by positive one, that will give me negative four. So that's my left hand side now expanded. Let's collect the like terms. 6x, have a look for any other x's, there's one. So 6x and it's take away 4x. That's 2x. Then I've got negative 4 here and I've got another negative 4 there. So negative 4 take away 4 is negative 8. That will give me 2. Let's add 8 to both sides. Oops, I'm running out of battery. I better be quick. Add 8 to both sides. Equals 10 on that side, 2x on this side. Divide both sides by 2 and we get x must be 5. I'm going to stop there because I'm dangerously low on battery and we've got quite a few examples there. Let's continue this in class. Make sure that you've written, if you've written any questions down so far, that you follow up with me with those questions.